It's time for the podcast, the Made for Agriculture podcast. Today we have a guest host introducing whoever you are. Welcome to the Made for Agriculture podcast. I am usually one of your hosts, Emily Beck, but this time our very own director of agronomy, Doug Sponhorst, took the session recordings into his own hands and partnered with the ever trustee, Scott Wilburn. As you know, agriculture is an ever-revolving door, and if you don't move quickly enough, it might just nip you in the butt. That's why, in true farmer fashion, this will be a very quick listen on fungicide timing for corn and foliar nutritional products. This is a very quick listen, so stay tuned, or you might even miss it. All right, well, good afternoon, everyone. We've got Doug Sponhorst here, Director of Agronomy with MFA, and uh, Scott Wilburn, Senior Staff Agronomist at Retail Central. Today we wanted to talk a little bit about uh, corn fungicide, soybean fungicide, and help everybody kind of understand why do we recommend fungicides, why do we recommend Trend B or our new product, Gold Advantage Complete, uh, how to use them, when to use them, and, and where we can have the most success with them. So Scott, you know, as we kind of talked about uh, earlier today, you know, the, the crop description we've seen out there, there's quite a bit of variety in where the corn growth stage is at. We've got some uh, corn that's beginning to tassel. Uh, we've got some that, you know, might be that V3, V4 growth stage. So quite a bit of variability out there, and we've had a lot of wet weather early season here and a lot of disease pressure. So why do we at MFA recommend uh, corn fungicide? Well, sure, Doug. Thank you. Um for having me up here. The, um, you know, we've worked with fungicide for probably at least 20 years, and we've just seen a lot of benefit at that uh, VTR1 stage. Obviously, when we have disease, um, you know, those are the times that, that we're going to gonna really see the benefit from that standpoint. But even absent disease, a well-timed fungicide has uh, benefited us on the, uh, on the yield side and just uh, the overall plant health later in the season, you know, uh, greener plants, top stay in the plants, uh, those kind of things. Um, now, having said that, this year we don't have to worry about just that piece because we do have plenty of disease. Uh, we're seeing a lot of gray leaf spot already, um, common rust, uh, northern corn leaf blight, and uh, we found our first tar spot uh, last week. Um, you know, tar spot is a relatively new disease, um, you know, and, and at least as of now, we're, we're mainly talking to the people in the central part of the state and north. Um, but the interesting thing about it, it's a new, a new disease, but for the most part, the timing for it is the same timing that we've been, um, the timing to take care of it is the same timing that, that we've been applying fungicides anyway. Um, the other thing that we're continuing to watch, which isn't an issue yet, is southern rust. Um, but it is, uh, it has made it into the country. It's in Louisiana, Texas, and Georgia. And, you know, we're just, just a couple storms away from maybe dealing with some of that. So a lot of reasons to, to protect this crop that we have growing right now with fungicide. Right. So you talked about, you know, disease and, and having that all around us right now. Um, you know, what are some other benefits that, uh, fungicides can have on our corn crop? You know, we, we've seen, the corn crop really start to begin to uh, curl in some areas. So what are some things that, you, that uh, from the plant health benefit that you see from, from a, a fungicide application as well too? Well, as I mentioned, we will, uh, you know, even years when we have not seen high to, you know, observed high disease pressure, we have still, with uh, timing it at that, you know, really around that VTR1, um, we've still observed um, yield benefits. Um, just through stress mitigation inside the plant, um, you know, it's, you know, we still need, need the cool nights when we can get them. We still need all the moisture we can get They're They're not going to, you know, fungicide can't do it all, but you know, it can help, uh, help get us through some of those, those, uh, times and, um, basically just protect what we're already, what's already standing in the field, you know, while we wait for conditions to improve. And then obviously when you have the disease, it's, you know, that's, that's the main reason that we're looking at it a lot of years. Right. So another thing that, you know, we've used for a number of years is Trend B. You know, it's our foliar, uh, foliar type product that we can mix with our fungicide applied at a gallon per acre. Um, why does Trend B generally help uh, enhance yield? 
So Trend B is a uh, is a nitrogen product. Um, you know, there are some other products on the market that uh, that some folks are familiar with. And uh, I guess the unique thing about Trend B, we also have some boron in it. Boron is uh, associated with a lot of the reproductive functions. Um, it's also very immobile in the plant while it's very mobile in the soil. So when you kind of get to those later stages, um, you know, if you need it, you may may have trouble with the plant actually finding it in the soil and it can't reallocate it, you know, where it wants to reallocate it like it does with, say, a nitrogen or potassium when you when you see it firing at the bottom of the plant, you know, it's moving it to, to where it needs it. So we're making the pass, uh, we're, we're putting on the fungicide, we're putting on that little shot of nitrogen. Um, you know, we've also uh, added the boron at that stage. Uh, really what we're doing there, Doug, is um, coming off of, of some research that now is, I mean, some of it's, oh, 15 plus years old, um, work that the university and, and industry has done. Um, with uh, adding the uh, the nitrogen products to 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 our fungicides, um, you know we obviously see benefits with just the uh, just the fungicides. Uh, that's the way we did it for years, uh, but we've seen added benefits and um, by adding those the products like Trend B. Yeah, so adding that adding that nitrogen piece to it with the fungicide really helps enhance photosynthesis. And, uh, and make all those processes work a lot more efficiently and synergistically. So I want to kind of move on to, you know, when we're talking about forecasting, uh, fungicide application in corn, well, what are some things you look at um, when trying to plan for that? This is where, uh, you know, when I talk to our consultants and others, you know, CAMs and, and other folks that are looking at fields, this is kind of where uh, it becomes maybe more art than science. Um, or, or really a combination of, of both. You know, when we find a field and we time it and it's perfect timing, we can't just snap our fingers and have a plane there. So we really have to uh, try to cheat to the front side of, of our timing. You know, we're shooting for, you know, that 90 to 100 uh, percent tassel emergence. Um, but, you know, if we can get out, depending on, on how quick we can get a plane in, we, we may want to go ahead and start getting it on the books at 50 to 75 percent. Um, you know, all that's going on there is, is sometimes it takes several days to get a plane in, and then you may have some inclement weather, or you may have an equipment situation, or it's too windy, and next thing you know, um, you know, it's a week has went by. So uh, one thing that, that we do when we're looking at, uh, at corn in a field, you know, we pull the whirl out, we can count how many leaves we are to the tassel, uh, somewhere around two to three days, depending on conditions. If it's something we're looking at every week, we may have a pretty good handle on, on how many leaves uh, that plant's throwing out each week. Um, but from there, we can basically extrapolate forward to, uh, you know, when we can expect to see tassels and try to try to get it timed as, as close to that as possible. Okay. One thing, uh, you know, I did remember from one of the earlier reports, uh, we started to see some Japanese beetles in, in, uh, in some cornfields there, kind of, I think, in the central uh, Glasgow, Boonville area. What's your, what's your recommendation? What are you seeing with an insecticide application? You know, we typically put that in with our uh, fungicide application with soybean. What are you thinking on corn? We do add it to, to corn at times. Um, you know, I, I, it's something, again, you want to scout to see what the conditions are, are like out there. Um, just on Japanese beetles, I can tell you there's a lot of times where you can, you can drive by a field and it, and it looks really dramatic, and as you just get a few rows in, it can, it can change really quick. Um, the other thing is, um, you know, just to set proper expectations, there, there's a lot of times that we have sprayed a field with an insecticide and fungicide, and just a few days later, you have Japanese beetles back in. Um, so, you know, I do want to, you know, kind of set proper expectations there. I guess the other thing, though, that I would just add, and, and obviously we do worry about silk clipping, but to date, I have yet to see a failure um, in a field because of silk clipping from Japanese beetles. Um, every now and again, I, I poll others and... and um, you know, that seems to be pretty, pretty consistent experience. Um, now I have been absolutely terrified, you know, but I've stepped into a field and all of a sudden all the silks are gone, but it happened after the, after the corn had pollinated. And I think it's just basically, you know, that's pollinated, that, that corn, you know, kind of going through, through that process and that, that sweetness and everything. And, and they, they get into that and just uh, clip them all. 
But in that case, uh, I, I can tell you, the first time I ran into that, I shucked back probably about 150 years <laughs> before I was satisfied to walk out. Um, so it, there may be there may be a, a reason to, to go ahead and add the insecticide, but you know, I just because I see a few Japanese beetles, that's that's not something I'm going to knee jerk towards adding. Okay, so kind of switching gears here to soybean. Um, you know, looking at the soybean crop, we've had a lot of early planted beans. You know, we're starting to see some some beans obviously uh, flower uh, right here. The summer solstice has just happened. What today or yesterday? Yesterday. yesterday. Yeah. So, um, well, what's your recommendation there with fungicides on soybean timing? Uh, gold advantage complete and then all that piece. <clears throat> so I guess historically, and, and this is something anybody that's had to listen to me talk on, you know, speak on this more than once, has, has heard me really talk hard about R3 and, and I really want to be at the front end of R3. And and that is true on what I'm going to call, as of now, still I'll call normal, normal timed soybeans, you know. Beans that you know really do not start flowering till after after that solstice until we're into summer. Um, you know they hit R three um, just in this part of the world, say a late you know group three bean that's that hits R three somewhere around that third week of July. Uh, I want to see fungicide timed right at the beginning of R three, and the reason for that, Doug, is it is those beans are going to rapidly race from R three to R five in that time period. Now go to the situation that we're seeing a lot this year and we also saw last year so we do have experience with this um beans that are already right now r2 and and maybe r3 by the end of this month we, we saw that last year by the end of june we had a lot of r3 beans those beans will spend a lot more time at r3 and they will spend a lot more time at r4 the, the numbers that you'll actually pull up on the chart is that the range of what beans will run from r3 to r5 on the short end ranges from around nine days all the way up to 41 days. So where we've already seen the early flowering, we're already, we may even already see that, that early uh, uh, pod at R3, uh, they're gonna be there for a lot longer. So kind of when those situations happen, we don't wanna necessarily be just boom, it's R3, pull the trigger and spray beans on the 28th of June. So we're gonna wanna keep our powder dry in that situation and um, and, and wait a little while. We'll revisit it in a couple weeks later. Um, now, heat can, you know, heat stress and some of the things we're seeing right now can also speed some of that up to where maybe 41 days is more like 25 to 30. Um, but, but again, it's going to be much longer than that situation where beans are planted late and they're not flowering until after the solstice. Yeah, and one thing, too, you know, we talk about how much nitrogen a soybean plant needs. Yes. Uh, those nodules are hard at work, too. So when we think about you know, gold advantage complete. A lot of those micronutrients we need for for nodulation to continue and and to and to be successful. Um, what else do we miss, Scott? Anything last minute? I, I guess one thing I wanted to uh, mention or describe. Uh, you know, Scott talked about R three soybeans. For those who are, you know, a little bit newer out here, well, Scott, can you describe what R three soybeans look like if you're walking around in a field? So the the easy, you know, as soon as a bean starts flowering, it's R1. Basically, when you have flowers in the upper part of the plant, and, and technically it's the upper two nodes, that's R2. But when you have a pod uh, begin to start forming on one of the upper four nodes, now we're at R3. Thank you, Scott. Well, if uh, you guys have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to, again, myself or your your staff agronomist or crop consultant in your See, area. a lot of our consultants are very well versed in, in this stuff, so reach out to them. We're talking about this stuff all the time. Yep. Well, thanks for your time, Scott. Thank you, Doug. Thank you for listening to Made for Agriculture, brought to you by MFA, your whole farm solution.